This is Palstar's, uh, uh, one of Palstar's uh, flagship tuners, the AT2KD. We're going to go over uh, some details of the tuner, the, uh, the construction of it, uh, plus uh, some of the explanations of the type of set screws that we use, plus the adjustment of the roller. We've had uh, some people wonder if the uh, roller uh, wheel becomes loose what to do with it and uh, also we'll compare the the AT2K to the AT2KD which is the differential version of this tuner they have uh, somewhat the same performance uh, they're uh, they're at the same price and they share most of the parts that you see in here in the AT2K are also uh, installed in the AT2KD uh, so what we want to do is um, I want to show you the roller inductor. Uh, the, um, the, these flat um, uh, pieces on the end where the uh, shaft that the wheel rides on is soldered, uh, these flat pieces are actually phosphor bronze on both sides and they, the shaft is soldered to the ends. So these have, because of the material, they have spring temper and occasionally if you accidentally roll the wheel and hit the end stop really hard and you forget where you are you know you've got the top cover on you don't realize that you're coming near the end and if you hit it at high speed uh, you're not going to damage anything actually but what may happen is that it pushes the shaft upwards and it tends to loosen the pressure of the wheel against the, the wire on the ceramic uh, body roller. So in order to correct, correct that, if you've done it often enough and you want to readjust it, what you do is you roll the, uh, roll the crank until the wheel is in the center between the end, uh, the end plates in the center and take a regular needle nose plier and grab the end firmly and bend down like this and bend the other end as well. What that does is restore the tension of the wheel against the wire and then if you overdo this and really uh, press down uh, you may get some other noises or squeals which which is not desirable so you'd have to redo it again. You can do that by lifting up like this and uh, adjusting it in such a way that you're happy with it so that's that's one of the that's one of the issues that uh, i get asked uh, quite often the other thing is all the set screws uh, for the isolating couplers there's two types there's one that is uh, delrin and one that is uh, and both are made here at the factory uh, these use 5 16 set screws which if you need a, a tool, uh, you ask for a 5 64 Allen wrench and they fit all the couplers in the tuner, including the one that used for the roller. And um, so what we'll do now is also, also, also uh, I forgot to mention that the set screws for the vernier drive, also this entire assembly is made here at the factory the set screws are 1 16th of an inch and you can see the small uh, collar over here where there's two set screws so if you had these tools which are available at home depot or lowe's uh, you probably they're very inexpensive actually two three dollars you should probably have these tools in case uh, some of these set screws might come loose and uh, it would prevent a unnecessary trip back to the factory for us to adjust it. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll compare the uh, AT2KD and uh, you can see here there's two independent capacitors, roller inductor, uh, RF coupler, uh, the analog uh, cross needle meter and the meter board and uh, we'll see in the AT2KD that it also has this same roller inductor, same meter board, uh, uh, the dual cross needle meter and the coupler uh, is shared by the 2KD. The difference is that these two capacitors are integrated together and I'll show you, I'll show you how.
This is our second tuner in the lineup, the 1500 watt series. Uh, this is called the AT2KD, which is very similar uh, to the AT2K. It shares the same uh, meter board, uh, dual cross needle uh, meter metering, and the RF coupler, as you can see here, and and it shares the same roller inductor. And uh, what is different about this tuner is that it has a differential capacitor. Uh, one of the things I wanted to comment about that I didn't really cover uh, when I was uh, speaking about the AT2KD is the this is a GPO fiberglass material uh, that you see here. Its, it's color is red. And uh, there are three grades. This is the middle grade of GPO uh, fiberglass. Uh, and <clears throat> you can see the edges are rounded and very, very smooth. Uh, these are cut with uh, water jet uh, process. Uh, similarly for the uh, capacitors, you can see the front and the, the, the rear and the front uh, plates are GPO material. Also, I'd like to point out that all our chassis, including the AT2K, are uh, clear coated uh, uh, they're clear coated and time savered, which uh, time saving, what that does, it takes out all the little scratches, and uh, and then it's uh, out. Uh, we use a material called uh, gold iridite, and it gives the aluminum uh, a slight gold tinge, and this is uh, to protect against any corrosion that might occur long term, uh, uh, which aluminum produces a white powder. And uh, the front panel, uh, front panel only, is uh, powder coated and screened, epoxy screened, and the rear panel is uh, is also screened with epoxy ink. And uh, the same switch assembly is in the uh, uh, that is here in the 2KD is also the same switch that we use for the AT2K. So. Uh, I'd like to show you uh, a little bit more detail about the differential capacitor and, uh, and how it works in the tuner. Uh, this is the differential capacitor I was referring to uh, when describing the internal workings of the AT2KD. And I just wanted to give you a rough idea of, of what this construction is. This particular capacitor belongs to the HF Auto. It's got... Uh, 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 very high voltage uh, uh, breakdown, about uh, five, five and a half to six kV breakdown, and uh, in <clears throat> and and you can see that there are two fixed stator sections, the upper and the lower, and uh, the only thing that moves is the ro rotor, which I'm turning now, and you can see it comes 180 degrees, so it's fully meshed with the top and then you turn 180 degrees, it's fully meshed with the bottom. And also, all the ratios between the fully meshed from the bottom to the top, all the ratios are fixed. In this particular technique, uh, uh, we use, uh, which is actually unique to Palstar, uh, it gives almost the same... Um, capability of tuning loads as the AT2K with two independent capacitors. There are some very, very low uh, loads that it may not function as well, uh, but uh, very, very rarely would you encounter that in, in actual practice. Uh, and um, the HF Auto, for example, uh, uses this technique uh, like we do in the AT2K, except this capacitor is obviously much larger and, uh, and, and is capable of uh, giving us a rating of 1800 watts in the HF Auto. So basically it rotates 180 degrees. This is fully meshed at the bottom, fully meshed at the top, and all the, all the settings in between. And this particular capacitor is uh, rotated with a, a processor controlled stepper motor. As well, the we use GPO3 for the rear uh, uh, fiberglass, the, re the rear and the front pieces, and they're all water jet cut, so it's very, very precise, so that uh, we don't have any 
difficulties with uh, anomalies for uh, accuracy in terms of putting the the units together. So this is uh, this is something that we get many many phone calls like what is a differential capacitor? Actually in the old days what they used to do is to flip the top section and roll it back so that they're in tandem. And of course I we can't do that. The design of this particular capacitor is such that there's no shaft on the rear. So I came up with the idea of having two of these facing each other and it has worked extremely well.